keep famous. I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my job properly you should be watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title and if you've read any of it, the description. <sighs> I caved. <clears throat> I bought a full size Natasha Denono. Admittedly, this is from the cheaper of her ranges. I say cheaper and it's still 65 quid. But 65 pounds I did not pay. Bought it off a Depop. Much uh, sensible price. So, if you want to find out exactly how this performs and what I think of it and whether I think it's worth that huge price tag and of course what this looks like in glorious technicolour assuming that you're currently in black and white then my darlings you have the prime location seat as I've said since time immemorial so it seems and Sam with the sloth straw totally agrees now is the time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies. Right, I'm back from the intro that I haven't filmed yet, clearly, because I have no makeup on. Um, really funny lighting out there again I'm just hoping that it doesn't get too weird because I actually film with natural light and then just two strip lights behind the camera because I don't want to use huge lights that blur everything because I want you to be able to see what's going on but uh, I've been up since half four it's now just gone ten well quarter past ten and the light is still very, very weird. Yesterday it was weird all day. So I'm like, I need to get something filmed. So I'm just going to have to wing it. So I will have shown you this in the intro. Natasha Denono. Now I know I said I was never going to buy Natasha Denona, And then I bought the little mini ones. But I saw this on Depop. For a sensible price. So I thought, let's see what the fuss is all about. This is what she looks like. This is the Love palette. I'm sure you'll have all seen it. It's not new. Well, it's new to me, but it's not new. Um, so I'm going to give this a bit of a whirl today and see whether this Natasha Denono is what everyone claims to be the best in the world. Let's see if I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, uh, this is still a teaching channel. So, by virtue of my chronic pain and uh, the fact that I want even beginners to be able to keep up with me, I will be going at a speed that, you know, beginners can keep up with me. Funny that, eh? Um, losing the plot. Uh, I will also be zooming in very very close so it's just my eyes on screen. It does mean when I'm looking down to change brushes, clean brushes, put more pigment on, you are going to get a lovely shot of my Widow's Peak uh, hairline. You're very welcome. Um, but given that so many people have said to me they find it super helpful because their eyesight's not what it could be and they're watching me on a phone screen they find it super useful that it's just my eyes on screen it also means you're not going to be distracted by the number of times that I wince with pain which is frequent very very frequent once I start with the old blending because repetitive movements like that really 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 aggravate my fibro 
but um, I'm also going to be including a clip in just a second or two where I talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded eyes. Uh, one is often mistaken for the other and although the way that makeup wears on both eye types is very similar through the day in order to get the best longevity and in order to have it looking as good as possible for a, right from the start you need to actually apply them slightly differently so the clip is up close and personal it's just my eyes on screen again and I'll talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and the method or the workaround for your eye type obviously if you're a long-term viewer feel free to skip through this bit because it's the same clip I've inserted mm, many 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 times so here's the clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, 
sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, this is one of the Natasha Denono 65 pan palettes. Still in a nice um, case. Metal at the front, plastic at the back. And the back has got all these holes so you can easily put a pin through and pop all of these shades out. So you can rearrange them or you know, if you want to take just a few with you, you can pop them into a magnetic palette. So, I'm going to start off with the floofy brush. This is clean, it's just stained. That's the problem with white bristles, unfortunately. And I'm going to start off by going into Soul, which is a really nice. Reminds me of Buon Fresco, sort of a mauve -y. Fair amount of kick up in the pan there, look. But that doesn't worry me, because it means you're getting pigment on the brush and you can always go back and pick up more. Right, always hold the brush right at the end, so you put as little pressure on as possible. And if you've got a long enough handle, brace the end of it against your palm. Just helps to stabilise it. I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get to wherever we're going to stop, and then reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this, I'm 46, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Um, but I know, you know, slim teenagers that have the same issue, in that your eyelid moves. And if you just rely on the windshield wiper movement, your lid can fold over and you can get those telltale white stripes, tiger stripes or barcoding. And by doing the Viennese Waltz blend, it's, uh, it tends to prevent a lot of that. So I'm going to start on the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to sort it out when your nose isn't in the way. And I'm going to start sort of Halfway between my natural crease and my brow. And I'm just going to start applying. And obviously, I tapped off a lot, so I don't know how far across this one bit of pigment will take me, but let's see. I still refuse to buy the really expensive ones. I love the look of her tri-crime palette, but there's no way I'm buying it. I mean, if someone was to get it for me for Christmas or whatever, I wouldn't say no. But... I just think over a hundred quid for an eyeshadow palette is ridiculous. Okay, well that one dip has actually done a fair amount of shadow. So I'm quite pleased with that. Nice to see that it's got good pigmentation. And it seems to be blending out quite nicely. So I shall go and pick up the kick up. It's currently on top of that pan. To do the other eye. The reason I always do both eyes at the same time, well not at the same time, that's ridiculous, I haven't got six hands, I'm not Ganesh. Um, but rather than doing one eye completely and then coming back and doing the other eye, uh, is because, especially with fibro, 
I can get quite swollen, puffy eyes. So, I mean, your eyes are not symmetrical to start with. Um, so you often have to do different shapes to get it to look the same both sides. Uh, but that's even more so the case when I have issues where my fibro is playing up and my eyes are swollen. They don't always puff up with my fibro, but you can see, look, this one looks nicely curved. <clears throat> This one looks flat, so I just need to bring this middle bit up just a fraction. Even though I did exactly the same shape both sides. And if I'd done all of the application of shadow with all the other colours blended in, I'd be able to see that they looked off slightly. But I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell <coughs> whereabouts <coughs> they were different. So by doing it like this, sitting back, closing your eyes, relaxing your brows, or we're well not closing both your eyes, obviously that's ridiculous, then you can't see what you're doing, but relaxing your brows, you can then make sure that the shape looks as close as you can get it. <coughs> Because unless you photoshop it afterwards, like a certain beauty guru whose career is based upon her lie, you're never going to get them completely symmetrical, ever. So don't even try. Don't even put yourself through the heartache of trying. Well, I've just cleaned the brush on a clean washcloth. I don't like using colour switches, they're far too harsh on the bristles. I mean, this is a synthetic, but if it was a natural hairbrush, or oh, they wreck. Colour switches wreck your natural hairbrushes. Now, this is obviously a very pinky, reddy, and purpley palette, but I can't decide which route I'm going to take. So, for the minute, I'm going to dip into Valentine here this super super pale pink and I'm just going to use this just to blend out the edges of this particular shade. Now if you're going to do this always go half on the colour, half off the colour and then you get the best blend without getting like a harsh line of delineation I'm just going to really lightly buff along the top there just to help soften that top edge a little really for the light strokes, barely touching your skin at all oh, next to these girls are having a well next door's girls are having fun this one with them that side you don't get swearing. The other side when they're on full volume I can't film at all because their yeah, swearing gets picked up on camera. Despite the fact I'm actually next to the wall of the opposite neighbour. Yes, yeah, so I'm just using this Valentine just to really gently Soften that top edge, give it a really nice romantic look. <clears throat> How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it's been crappy, I hope tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, good morning. I hope it's as fabulous as you are, darling. Right. Having cleaned this brush off, I'm going to use the same one again, and I'm going to go into Trust. Am I going to go into Trust or am I going to go into Dream? No, I'm going to go into Dream, I think. I think I'll use Trust for 
deepening up the crease. Right, I'm going to go into Dream. Which is a different texture completely. It almost looks like it's getting a hard pan on it. Look. See that? Hmm. That's interesting. But oh, I got pigment up on the brush, so I'm going to pop this just underneath that first mauve that we put on. It's blending lovely. That's the damn thing now. Because I've only got my blind eye open. So I was relying very much on muscle memory there, folks. Add a bit of windscreen wiper in, but then just always remember to go back to your Viennese walls. Can you see that that's got like a, a line there that doesn't want to fill in? That is odd. See that? That's just when my eyes open, it's not as noticeable. Hmm, that's interesting. I have to admit, so far I'm not exactly blown away by these. I mean, I've got... <clears throat> I've got palettes by indie brands that perform just as well, if not better. I went for the purples because obviously where they have a blue element to them reds are quite difficult to cultivate but blues are even worse so <clears throat> sorry I've gone very husky on you today I'm starting to sound like Bonnie Tyler that was lovely Yeah, so where you've got like the blue element to a purple combined with the red, it can make them. Purples and greens are pretty much the most difficult colours to work with, and they just happen to be my favourite shades. Marvellous. Um, but that's why you'll tend to find if there's a, a green or a purple in a palette, if I'm doing a first impression, I will usually use one of those because if they can. <clears throat> if they can create a good green or a good purple, then you can be pretty sure of the rest of the palette too. Um, and this purple is taking a lot more work than purples in other palettes that I've got that didn't cost, whose retail price is not as expensive as this. So obviously I didn't pay retail on this. I'm just going to clean this brush and then grab a little bit of sole back on the brush. Just 
see if I can soften that edge there where it's blending. Because it's blended much softer this side than it has over here. Which is interesting. See how much purple that's picked up as I've gone across there. See, I've got most of the purple off of that. It's definitely picking up excess purple pigment. It's getting a bit of a line across there, but not as bad as this eye went. It's weird, isn't it? Right, I'm going to use a much more tapered, smaller blending brush. Whatever the size of the head of the brush, that's how far out it will blend the shade. So if you want to keep a shade more compact, use a brush with a smaller head to it. Right, I'm going to go into Trust now, which is the deeper purple. And I'm going to use this through the crease. So if you've moved your crease, now is the point to follow wherever you've moved your line to. Just doing tiny little circles with it. I do normally end up putting uh, the deepest shade through the crease like this because darker shades go backwards and lighter shades come forwards. So if you are trying to trick the eye into looking like part of it is going back further than it actually is in order to create that crease then using a darker shadow will really really help with that <clears throat> hopefully you can see the difference there between those two I'm also going to pop a little bit of this just on the outer edge of my mobile lid. I think that dream must be a satin. From the way it's gone hard pan. Although even though it did do hard pan, I was still able to pick up pigment, which is good. I struggle this side because I have super deep creasing just here. And that's from damaged calls when I was, you know, five, six, seven years old. And they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly with this eye at the Oxford Hospital. But of course, you're talking about the seventies. The, uh, uh, they used to pull your eye around left, right, centre. Didn't give any thought to 
any damage they could be causing. But this lid moves significantly more than this one does. That's why I always say to you, you never pull your lid around. Unfortunately when it's time to apply the colour to this part of the lid, I do have to stretch my lid out. Otherwise it, um, it just collects in the creasing and then ends up cascading down through the day and getting into my eye, which actually really hurts. I'm just going to rub a pad with some micellar water on. Just to tidy up the edges. I don't like using um, stickers or tape because if it's sticky enough to stop pigment from going under the edge of it then it's going to pull that delicate skin when you remove it. And because I do my base afterwards, if you're someone who does your base first, you can achieve the same thing by using a concealer. Right, now I'm going to be using a lip brush to apply shimmer to my lid. Now as always never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill it. But once I've applied the pigment to the brush I'm going to be wetting it with this. You can use any spray really. You can use a moisturising one like MAC or Mary Badescu. Um, you can use a priming spray, a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle and just put water in it each time you do your makeup. Right, I'm going to go into. <laughs> oh, I've got to use blind, haven't I? It's just got to be done. I can't. I can't not, having spoken about being blind in one eye can't not use the shade blind. It's quite soft. Um, very similar to a, like a super shock shadow kind of consistency. Right, now the ferrule here is wet, so I'm just going to stick it in my knuckles there and spin. Because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue on the bristles. Because then you're not going to have a brush, you're going to have a stick. Uh -huh. Right, this is why I like using a lip brush to do this, because you can get right into the corner. Because the first time I use a palette, I don't do cut crease because I want to see what sort of opacity the shimmers have. So I'm just gonna this is actually a really this is a much prettier silver than I was expecting. Hmm got a hint of pewter to it. Right, I'm going to use the very tip of the bristles just to smudge where it meets that mat on the edge there. Okay, quite like that. Right, I'll dry the brush off. And I should go back in and do the same on the other eye. 
Right, if you have the same problem as me where you've already got those creases and you have the same problem of pigment just settling in them and then cascading down and getting into your eyes, I'm going to show you how I stretch my lid out to cause as little additional problems to it as possible. First thing to remember is don't put it out any further than you have to. All you're doing is straightening the crease. You're not pulling it out to your ear roll. So just once the creases are flat, then start to apply your colour. Go as quickly as you can without, you know, ruining your look. And go slightly beyond where the creasing is. And then gently let go. And you can then just finish the rest of the lid off. You can see how much more this lid makes, can't you? And again, I'm going to use the tip of the bristles just to smudge that edge. Hmm. I was going to do uh, a second shimmer on there. But all of the other ones are either gold or a red shade or this sort of burgundy and it it wouldn't actually go with the purple very well it would it would clash a bit with that purple. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to pause you now while I go and pop some foundation and whatnot on and then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now for me I've got a bit of a job to do but for you it's going to be completely instant. Hey I am back. I'm also filming a foundation review and I seem to have completely buggered my um, <coughs> tripod up. So apologies if I'm currently at a weird angle. I'm not at a weird angle. Do I look like I'm at a weird angle? I'm always at a weird angle, I think. Right. I've done my usual soap brows. And I'm going to go in with Trust again. Which is the colour that I used through my crease. And for my brow. And I'm going to pop that on a flat top brush. And just run that along the lower lash line. Honestly, it has been so long since I've done a foundation review. I almost forgot what I was doing. I nearly forgot to give a time check in. I'm just like, oh, for goodness sake. So I'm actually I'm changing the way that I do my foundation reviews in that I'm wearing the foundation quite a few times with different primers and stuff to see what gives the best result before filming with it. But this particular one that I'm filming with today, I've got a little sample pot off, so I'm kind of got to go straight in with it. So I've got no idea how this is going to wear through the day, but uh, we shall see. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, flat topped and chunky. It is bloody perfect for blurring out your bottom lashes, but you can use any densed packer or smudger brush. And I'm going to go into uh, I'm going to go into Intense, which is a slightly peachier version of that first shade that I went in with. And I'm just going to use that 
to buff out the lower lash line. It's, I don't know whether it's because I've put that purple with it on my upper lid. But it's looking ridiculously pink on camera. When in the palette it definitely looks like a mauve, like a, like a born fresco from modern renaissance. Which, if a palette's got that in, that's my go-to transition shade. Now I'm going to use my Lethal Cosmetics highlighter in Scatter because it's got that lovely lilac -y shift to it. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay Ooh, a decade ago. I'm going to pop that under the tail of the brow. <laughs> my camera's slowly sliding towards me or what? And then do the inner corner and just run it along and blend it in with the colours under the eye. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time and I'm going to finish off this makeup look. Chuck some of this highlight on my face, pop some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, try and stop the camera keep falling towards me and uh, I'll be back again for you. Instant. I am back. Okay. I risked putting a little bit of this um, LA Girl Shockwave Neon Eyeliner in Vivid in my waterline. It's one of the few pencils that will actually stay in my waterline without irritating my eyes too much. I used my orange topped uh, Essence Lash Princess. This is the volume version. The lip gloss is Fussy by Fenty. I love these little mini size ones. But we are here to discuss this. Um, okay. I like the finished look. But could I get this look with palettes I've already got in my collection that I paid significantly less for? Yes. Am I glad I've got this for comparison reason? Yes. Am I itching to buy another one? No, not really. These are okay. But they're nothing to write home about. You know, I I don't see how she justifies the cost because they don't blend any easier or any better than any other cheaper palettes that I've got in my collection. Not being funny, I could use the um, it's my pleasure and ooh la la palette from Colourpop and create exactly this look and you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference. I like it. I like the colour scheme. I like how it blends. That purple satin gave me a bit of an issue but after a bit of uh, gentle manipulation, uh, I managed to get rid of that, that line that had appeared. 
but I really don't see how she can justify. I mean, these are what, 65 quid? It's not worth 65 quid. And I think the only reason this is cheaper than the 111 quid ones or $129 ones is because you get more in the more expensive ones. But as I understand it, it's the same formula as these. Save your money. Seriously, save your money. There is nothing that special about this formulation that you should feel like you're missing out if you don't have it. Probably going to get hundreds of Natasha Denona stands come screaming for me now. But you always get honesty with me. Like it or not, I'll tell you what I think. And it is, in the end, my opinion, which like assholes, everybody has one. Right, my lovelies, if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check your subscription status. YouTube have been undeleting you. Undeleting? YouTube have been deleting you. But they've been leaving my films in your recommended list, so it's not obvious that you are no longer part of the 4F family. And darlings, I miss you. I miss you so much. I have no idea what that was. Clearly I need to go and get another coffee. Seriously though, please double check, not just for me, but for all the channels you follow. Likewise, check your notification status, because mine had been set back to personalised from all. Not that I seem to be getting emails at the moment anyway, but given how YouTube changed things on a whim without telling anybody, there's a good chance that all of a sudden they'll start sending them again, in which case you're going to want your notifications on all. If, however, you are new and you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, this is the kind of thing you get here. I witter on at you in what I'm told is a very soothing voice about everything and nothing in particular. So if that sounds like the kind of thing you're going to enjoy, it's super easy to come join the family. You just click that red subscribe button, turn it grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that someday soon YouTube will start emailing us again. In the meantime, if you have some time to kill, I have an awfully large back side, yes, but back catalogue of films that you can look through. I've got product reviews, foundation reviews, um, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So basically, as I have said, for the official length of time known as Yonks, grab a drink, grab a snack, Pick a playlist, put your feet up, and indulge, my darlings. What better way to spend some time than listening to me blether while I apply coloured pigments to my face? Which effectively is the sort of makeup channels do, really. Right. On that encouraging note, <laughs> as ever, my darlings. All that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.